You're very welcome. Good morning, Kisa. Thank you, thank you, oh, thank thank you, you so very much. much. Oh, I thought you were going to respond in Kisa. What you say? Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I'm, I'm really <laughs> impressed. I'm, I'm really <laughs> impressed. You, you picked up a few things in the Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little. But it will get better with time. Hopefully, so. How many days have you guys been here? Just a couple of days, yeah, just so couple of days. we've had time to be here. We've okay. had time to have a little bit of jollof rice. Ah! We've some of that already. Have you tried Nigerian jollof before? Not yet. I hear the Ghana is better, it. though. Don't even try it. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Don't try it. The Ghana jollof is the best one. If you try the Nigerian jollof, I don't think you'll survive it. So don't try that okay, one. Okay, so we've got yeah. the best one. We've exactly. had a dance to down flat by Kelvin Boy already. Ah! So I think we've sampled it, really. <laughs> It Ghana. wasn't a good dance. Uh, got, got to admit, our dancing skills weren't great, but we, we had oh, a go. We tried it. Out. But at least you tried, we tried right? We tried. At least there's some Ghana inside you. You are dancing yeah. to Ghana tunes, and of course you're eating Ghana jollof. So this is this is all good for Ghana. <laughs> Listen, this is three goals already. Yeah, they are home. This, this is three home. goals yeah. already for yeah. Ghana. But tell me, um, um, this is big for us here in Ghana. I'm sure it's for you as well. Mm. But there are a number of World Cup qualifiers being played. Why this interest in Ghana, Nigeria? Well, for us, this is a huge match. Uh, I present Sports World on the BBC World Service. And in Ghana, in mm. Nigeria in particular, mm. there is that appetite for the Premier League, we know. So they're listening to us. They're following the matches. And we had to sample this West <laughs> African double. We had to be here and see right. what it was all about. And I'm loving your positivity, Cookie Tea, as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we've had a, a number of downsides when it comes to Ghanaian football regarding the Black Stars. Uh, times have not been really um, interesting for us. So I'm just hoping that same way I'm excited, the rest of the 30 million Ghanaians out there would also be excited. But Kelvin, you can take it away from here. Well, yes, um, the welcome, John. But Thank you. Just, just like I said, yeah. there is a big, big interest in this. And we yeah. know a couple of players uh, are in England. How, how is this big for um, the people in UK as well? Yeah, the interest in African football has never been bigger in the UK, particularly after the Africa Cup of Nations. You know, I've covered about five or six now. And I, I was more in demand than ever from the UK radio stations, so not just the BBC World Service, but from the, the BBC's UK radio stations, because mm. of all the Premier League stars, and because, for the first time in a long time, all the games were on TV. So if you were in England, you could watch all the games. Mm. The BBC had 10 games as well, so the interest is huge. There's some big Premier League stars playing in this yeah. game. Thomas Partey yeah. for, for Ghana is a player that, that, at the moment, the Arsenal fans absolutely loving. He's, yeah. he's in brilliant form, so I just hope for you guys, that you yeah. can bring that Arsenal form into this game against Nigeria. Mm. I, I am particular. I'm sorry, yeah, Kelvin, no but problem. I'm particularly interested in what you're expecting to see, especially mm. from the Black Stars. This is going to be interesting. I think they've got a lot to prove, haven't they? The build-up has been a little chaotic. Right. We thought we would be heading to Cape Coast Stadium and now at the Baba Yara, which yeah. we're very looking, much looking forward to. Mm. You were talking about what the kind of support. I think if that's that support that we saw when mm. they beat Egypt in the World Cup qualifying right. for 2014, right. that's going to carry the Black Stars. So mm. let's wait and see. But I do just have this feeling, despite the fact the Africa Cup of Nations campaign, mm. we don't really want to mention that, <laughs> do we? didn't go so well. I just have a feeling that mm. this could be the time for the mm. Black Stars. Mm. Yeah, the atmosphere for me is interesting as well, because I was at the World Cup in 2014 with the Ghana team in Brasilia, when that relationship seemed to break down between right. the fans and the team. Right. And then there's been a downturn, but yes, could this be the chance to, to get the fans mm. back behind the Black Stars? So I'm really interested to see the atmosphere. Mm. And if Ga I think Ghana need to start the game well, don't they, to get those fans behind them? Well, John, aside the players, there is also one particular interest. Chris Uten, who's been yeah. in the Premier League, is now the technical advisor for the Black Stars for this double header. You know him very well. What, what do you think he adds to this Ghana team that may make Ghana superior over? Nigeria. Yeah, he's a very interesting character. I think he was, he was popular in England as well. What he brings in terms of football, his organisation, structure to a team. Mm. You remember his Brighton team in the Premier League, yeah. very defensively organised. Sometimes they were criticised for being a bit boring, being a bit dull, yeah. uh, but, but they got results. You know, They stayed in the Premier League. And if he can bring a bit of that organisation to the Ghana team, I think that, that can really help. And I also like his personality as well. Mm. He, he's very down the line. You know, he doesn't... Yeah. 
doesn't get too up when there's a win, doesn't get too down when there's, there's a defeat. I think it will be a really calming influence in the Ghana team. So on paper, I think it's a really good appointment. Well, really good appointment. You look at the Nigerians, they've stuck to Austin Egovan, even though he decided to resign after uh, the Nations Cup. Now, you spoke about Thomas Partey's brilliant form. You look at Nigeria, they have a number of very solid players in their team who also play in the Premier League. Yeah. How is that going to play positively in, in their favour? There's no doubt about it, Nigeria are a really impressive team. Uh, and the fact that Victor Osimhen is fit, didn't play in the Cup of Nations, the fact that he's fit adds another dimension to the Nigeria team. So, you know, on paper, and I hate to say this in Ghana, but on paper, I, I think a lot of Ghana fans will admit this as well, on paper, if you put the two teams next to each other, Nigeria starts as favourites. But it's a local derby, and that makes it really unpredictable. And I've been saying it in interviews throughout this week, I think Ghana have to win on Friday. They, they have to take a lead to Nigeria for that second leg to, to have a chance of getting through to the World Cup. I think it, it's crucial that match tomorrow. Mm. All right. Now, Lee, we've, we've, seen, we've seen critical points where teams with all the quality on paper have failed to excel. And we just saw that during the African Nations Cup. Even Nigeria with that brilliant form from the group stages, they had to cap capitulate in the um, round of 16 against uh, Tunisia. How, what lesson do you think would... would, would um, be taken from that and may make an impact in uh, this double header? Well, I think it shows that you can hold the form you want, can't you? When it comes into one-off matches, Nigeria experienced that at the Africa Cup of Nations, I think team of the group stage, weren't they? But it didn't matter at all when it came to the knockouts. And I think that is the key thing. These are individual matches. I do agree with John. I think Ghana do need to take a lead into that second leg in Abuja to give them that confidence that they can then go and, and win an aggregate, which is obviously the aim to get to the World Cup finals. But I don't think we can look too much at the momentum. If you'd looked at that, you would probably give this to Nigeria already. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case, and I really do think there's a chance. Yeah. yeah, I think Ghana can learn a lot from that Tunisia game at the Cup of Nations when Nigeria were, were knocked out surprisingly. As we said, they were so good, Nigeria, yeah. in the group stage. They played Tunisia week. We all expected Nigeria to have an easy win, but Tunisia frustrated Nigeria and um, they defended so well, and Nigeria seemed to run out of ideas. Yeah. Victor Osimhen is, is playing in this game, so it'll be slightly different, but I think Ghana can learn a lot from that Tunisia game. Mm. Very well, and I was just uh, coming to talk about Osimhen. Could he be that X factor, that Nigeria? Yeah. Because he was, Nigeria were looking up to him at the Nations Cup. Unfortunately, he missed it, but he's in here. Could he be that X factor for the Eagles? Uh, he's, he's, he's top quality, Victor Osimhen. I mean, we talk about the, the best strikers in, in European club football, Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland. Dusan Vlaovic. I, I don't think Victor Osman is far behind those guys. Uh, you know, his numbers tell the story. He's a fantastic player. Whenever I've watched Nigeria and he's playing, he seems to be a player who can, who can turn a game for them. So it's a huge plus for Nigeria that he's back fit. But they've got so many attacking yeah. options, haven't they? That, that is the thing. Yeah. And it's going to be very interesting how that all works out because creativity, they've got it all there with Kelechi and Acho. Uh, and Moses Simon had such a great Cup of Nations yeah. as well. So, yes, going forward, creativity, they've got it. But, as John was saying there, I think we've seen teams like Tunisia at the Cup of Nations. They can frustrate Nigeria, and if Ghana can do that and they can be solid, they've got the linchpin in midfield in Thomas Partey, yeah. then there are opportunities there. Now, looking at this, what <laughs> mentality do you think Ghana should take into that game? You, you know, you spoke about how Nigeria have a lot of attack and options and then that creativity up front. What do you think should be Ghana's mentality going well, into this game? Well, they've got to believe they can win. I'm sure they will do. Um, we know the build-up has not been uh, perhaps ideal, but we don't know how that's impacted upon the players. We know that maybe some relations have been fractured a little bit within the media, <laughs> maybe with some of the fans as well. I do think that needs to change with the fans, and I'm sure it will when they go to the Baba Yara Stadium on, on Friday night and get behind the team, and I think that's going to help and give them that lift. They've yeah. got to be solid, they've got to be compact, especially in, in the first half, haven't they? They can't give away early chances or you know, an early goal for Nigeria, and you know things can change and turn. But if they can be, have that solidity, hopefully create some chances of their own. As I say, with the likes of Thomas Partey in the centre of that midfield, acting as that linchpin. And I think the players, it's a fresh start for a lot of them yeah. as well. <laughs> and some of them haven't perhaps got that baggage of what mm -hmm. has gone on over the last few years. We'll see what some of the exciting younger players like uh, Felix Afanajan can, can perhaps do if he gets okay. his chance. So yeah. Yeah, there are chances there. Well, John, Jordan, are you experienced? Yeah. He has it all <laughs> when it comes to playing some of these top games. He's played at the top level. He, he nearly missed this game yeah. 
what 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 is he going to offer Ghana with his presence? Yeah, it's massive to, to have Jordan Ayew back. I know sometimes he is criticised, isn't he, uh, yeah. by, by the Gunner and yeah. press, but I'm, yes. I'm a big fan of Jordan. Too much, yes. <laughs> yes too much. <laughs> it's uh, all because he doesn't get the numbers yeah, we, I, we expect him to. Yeah, I know, but he's such an unselfish player, Jordan Ayew. And yeah. I think you, you talk to players who play with him, teammates, club and international level, and you know they all love him, and that tells a story because he works so hard, and sometimes he's, he's a bit too... Too unselfish, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of concentration in modern football about numbers, about stats, how many goals he scored, how many assists. Yeah. But his work rate is is huge, so I think it's massive. I hope he's fully fit. Obviously, he's coming to the camp late, hasn't he? It's difficult, yeah. but he's got that experience. He's been through a lot. He can help these young players that Lee mentioned through this game. So I think it's huge. It's a big miss not to have Andre Ayew here. You know, he he'd have loved this game. It's the type of game that he yeah. would have been so keen to play with his experience, his determination, but yeah, it's great to have Jordan here. I just think he's got to be selfish. Strikers have to be <laughs> selfish, don't they? They've got to try and yeah, score exactly, the yeah. Yeah. And Perhaps we're at Andre, yeah, Andre Ayew there. That leadership as well mm. they can provide. But yeah, be mm. selfish. Yeah. Try and score the goals, I think. <laughs> so, so let me ask this, John and Lee James, if you had two minutes in the dressing room oh. with these players before they hit the pitch, what would you tell them? Well, I would say mm. believe, because it doesn't matter if you are maybe the underdogs going into okay. this. I'll, I'll tell you, Cookie T, I'm a Leicester City supporter. Okay. Leicester City won the Premier League. <laughs> Those odds were incredible. No one thought we would do it. So I would say go out there, right. perform your best, believe, have that hunger, that desire, that passion that I know mm. the fans will give them as well in the Baba Yara right. Stadium, and they can do it. John? Well, we have a lot of listeners on the BBC in Nigeria, so it'd be two minutes in the Ghana dressing room. Then I'd have to go over to the Nigerian Being dressing impartial. room as well. <laughs> I, have to, I have to be balanced. That's fair. I'm that's sorry, fair. I have to be balanced. No, that's fair. No, but I'd say to, I'd say to these, these, these Ghana players that just forget all the noise around this game. Just concentrate on the next 10 minutes, mm. the next 10 minutes. Mm. Build from solid foundations. You saw that Tunisia frustrated this Nigeria mm. team at the mm. Cup of Nations. Maybe there'll be some overconfidence from Nigeria. Mm. Everyone... Outside Ghana is expecting them to yeah, win, but you, you have to side. believe. You yeah. have to believe that you can win this. And they'll tell the Nigerian believe. dressing room they can believe. win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one last one. Your predictions. Ooh, what do you think, John? Yes. Oh, me no, first. Me. first. Yes. Okay, John. <laughs> John, John Burnett, you first. Uh, okay, I will predict mm -hmm. that Ghana will win the first leg. <laughs> But then I'm not sure how it's going to go in the second oh. leg. So I've given you a prediction, but I'm sitting on okay. the fence as well. At least we are winning. But how many yeah. goals? I'd say 2-1 on Friday, but I'm not sure about the second leg. I'm not okay. sure about the second leg. But that's leg. fair. Let's just concentrate yeah. on Friday. Same so Friday. 1-0. One nil. One nil. One nil, Ghana. 1-0. One nil. Tight. Very, very tight <laughs> match, but okay. In, in the, 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 the first half or the second very half? Very narrow. Later on in the second half. <laughs> Later on in the second half. <laughs> yeah. What minute? Likely to score. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, are you? I said, it said be selfish. So Jordan's going to be selfish okay. and score. All okay. right. So that's very fair. It could possibly be Amati. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. John Bennett that. and Lee James are sports journalists from the BBC. They joined us this morning, and I'm sure you're heading straight to Babaya. Are you leaving today? Or yeah, leaving today. Yes, we okay. are. Yeah, All we right. are. Be yeah, safe out there. Thank you so um, much. One of our delicacies in Kumasi is fufu. Have you tried it oh, before? I've been told to try yeah. fufu. We're waiting to get to yes. Kumasi. When you to get try. to Kumasi, <laughs> please try fufu and uh, let me know what we you think. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it.